What's up, guys? How's it going? Welcome back to another episode of Channel Chasers. And this week, we are coming at you talking about the latest, uh, to wrap up, Disney Plus original series, The Mandalorian. Of course, as always, I'm your host, Jay from SJ's Reviews. And of course, joining me is my co-host, my good friend, my self-proclaimed sidekick, Brian Kersey. How you doing tonight, Brian? Hello, peoples. Hopefully you can hear me. This is... Yep, we can. And that's nice. great, because we are here to talk about The Mandalorian. This is a show that I have been excited since it was announced, since prior to its announcement. It's been uh, like in a bunch of different stages all throughout. I'm a huge, hardcore Star Wars fan. Uh, before we get started... Uh, First off, uh, greetings to everyone in the Omniverse. Thank you guys for the good reception of the whole like channel change over. For those of you guys who are watching this in the video version on YouTube, we really appreciate that. Indeed. And also, hello to everyone listening to us on the different podcast platforms. We are officially on Apple Podcasts now. We're in the big leagues, Brian. Woo! This is really exciting. And again, I just want to Say thank you to everybody who's supporting us in this, like, newer venture. Uh, apologies for, like, the audio quality stuff. You know, obviously, we're still kind of in the early stages of this, so there are bound to be kinks here and there. And uh, we apologize for missing out on last week. I was really sick, and I had no voice. And you can't really record a podcast if you don't have a voice. And if you hear me cough periodically throughout this, I'm still kind of fighting the remnants of that cold. So apologies in advance. But also, overall, you know, it was the holiday and all. Yeah, it is the holiday. We did give you guys an episode on Christmas Eve, so give us credit for that. Uh -huh. So that was fun. And uh, it seems like you guys liked it, too. So we, again, appreciate the support for this new adventure. But yeah, Brian, so you just finished it recently. So let's hear what you got, what you thought about the Mandalorian season one. Well, just quick side note my history i i grew up with the original trilogy uh like i still somewhere in the back closet somewhere have the vhs bundle of the original trilogy i used to watch it growing up all the time i have those too is it the, is it the gold box set or is it mm -hmm. the regular box set nice i have the gold one too the one with darth vader's face on it yep yeah, I have the I, very one. And I used to watch it all the time growing up. Of course, I was still a kid, so when when the first, when episode one came out, so when that came out, I was like, okay, this is different, but still cool. I like it. <coughs> yeah. Um, and then and then two, and then two came out, and I was like, no, this is not good. Uh, completely avoided three in the theater. Uh, really, three is actually really good. It, honestly, three is one of my favorites. It holds up. It, there's still some rough parts, yes, but I will. I'll defend three. Three is actually really good. I've mo and I think I've mostly watched it in passing since, and I like it. Just back then, it was it was fatigue. Like no, I I, I feel that. I feel that. I mean, with me, it's kind of a similar story. Uh, my uncle is a massive Star Wars fan, and so I grew up just watching the original trilogy on repeat. And like, I was like seven when the uh, Phantom Menace came out, so this was my first ever experience watching like Star Wars movies in the theaters. So we went like every year to the new releases: Phantom Menace, Attack of the Clones, and Revenge of the Sith. Um, Attack of the Clones, I still think is horrible, but it gave us the Clone Wars, which is arguably one of my favorite things to come out of Star Wars ever. So, like, I'll take the good with the bad. And I feel like that's kind of just my opinion on Star Wars overall. Uh, you know, uh, we were going to do a Cinema Seekers holiday special episode talking about the Disney trilogy. But again, I got sick, so that kind of fell through. And, you know, also, Brian didn't holidays. have time during the holidays to watch Rise of Skywalker so you know uh you know that fell through but just kind of given general thoughts overall honestly 
you know, the Disney stuff is kind of hit or miss for me. There's some stuff I really like. Like, I still think The Force Awakens is great. Um, Last Jedi, Mm -hmm. I have very negative opinions on The Last Jedi. And I honestly really enjoyed Rise of Skywalker. Like, J.J. did the best he could with what he was given. And I really enjoyed that movie for what it was. Was it perfect? Um, No. But I really enjoyed it. For me, for me, I saw Force Awakens in the theater. Loved it. Still do. Um... Last Jedi, I kept hearing bad things upon bad things, and all my friends venting about how pissed they were, including Jay. So I was just like, um, okay. So like, I just... you guys, I'm I am the resident pessimist of the podcast, but keep in mind, I don't like go out of my way to hate things that I usually love. Okay, just just no, just, just as a clear barometer. So when I was like fuming at the mouth, like this shit. Nope. Nope. So they ruined it, it. It took me a long, long time to finally see Last Jedi. And basically my thoughts were there was some good, there was some bad, but ultimately the film was depressing and redundant. And it just didn't feel like a Star Wars film. But you know what does feel like Star Wars through and through? The Mandalorian. Which, which by the way, just FYI, I still have yet to see Rise of Skywalker. Yeah, so I'm not going to go into detail about that. But yeah, so that this brings us to our main subject of the podcast this week, which is, of course, The Mandalorian, which, man, you want to talk about something that feels straight up Star Wars? This is it. Mm-hmm. Like, it's got Star Wars mixing with, like, classic Western vibes, and I absolutely love it. As it is, though, a show that I don't review, because I have, like, a 9-to-5 job, so I have to get up early. And so, by the time it's time for me to actually review and release it, it wouldn't be feasible. Uh, I still do it with High School Musical musical series and Harley Quinn, but those get um, meddling reviews too. And those are on a Friday. So I don't have to get up the next day for work. But anyway, so watching The Mandalorian, I wasn't on it each week, but I watched it in like three chunks, three, four chunks. Yep. And when I did watch it, I really enjoyed it, especially a little... Kawaii little addition to the Star and Wars I mean, universe. like all all throughout, like you know, Brian and I are in an RP group where we like do our uh, role playing games and stuff every week with our, you know a group of friends of ours, and uh, you know, myself and our buddy Alec are like the two hardcore hardcore Star Wars fans. And we're all we were just constantly gushing about how good the Mandalorian is. Like it is so good, especially if you are a fan of like Mandalorian culture. Um, and, like, all that extended lore stuff, which I'm glad <laughs> they've actually, like, resurrected a lot of, like, the Legend continuity and fitted it into, um, you know, modern Disney Star Wars canon. So that's pretty dope. Um, and they just open up a lot, <laughs> a lot of doors here. And, like, this show <laughs> proves to us that, like, you don't need heavy dialogue to make a good show. Um, you know, um, our main protagonist, Din Djarin, aka the Mando, he is a man of very few words, but man, his actions definitely speak volumes. I mean, there is very little dialogue in the first episode, and in the second one, I clocked it, and it's like eight minutes before, <laughs> where the only dialogue that you hear is like Jawanese. Yep. And I mean, like, I think I think that's really cool because like you get to know, you know, Mando's character, Din Djarin, like all throughout the show, but it's never through dialogue, it's never like exposition heavy. You just learn by how he acts, how he reacts to things, and mm-hmm. you know, various little flashbacks all throughout. And I think that's like the perfect way to tell a story. Uh, you know, one of the you know, basic things you learn in screenwriting classes is, like, the first rule of writing is show, don't tell. And this is a master class of show, don't tell. Indeed. It's like, it is just amazing. 
And they picked, like, the perfect time period to set this in. This takes place about five years after Return of the Jedi, so it's a pretty blank period. It's, you know, in that 30-year gap between the original trilogy and the sequel trilogy. And so, like, the, the Empire is, you know, still around, but it's kind of just the remnants, and we're still kind of learning how, like, the galaxy built itself back up into the New Republic and all that. So, again, there's a lot of interesting world-building and fun fact for you guys, this show didn't actually start off as The Mandalorian. It was originally going to be um, a series called Underworld that Lucas has had in development for like over a decade. It, and mm-hmm. it's, it was supposed to be an anthology series that followed several different Underworld related characters like bounty hunters, smugglers, spice runners and the like. Uh, but eventually it got like shifted around. Uh, once Disney bought it, uh, they started like you know, mo- um, moving people and like finding like a re- the proper showrunner, and eventually Favreau took it over, and we got the Mandalorian. The, Favreau the and Dave now. Filoni. Yeah, and Dave Filoni. For those of you guys who don't know, if you're you know not familiar with like Star Wars behind the scenes stuff, Dave Filoni is one of the creators of Star Wars: The Clone Wars, which I said earlier is my favorite thing to come out of Star Wars that's not the original trilogy. So, like, I already had faith in this. Um, this is, a lot of people like to say that, this, um, you know, Favreau and Filoni are kind of the new regime now that the sequel trilogy is well, over. Well, they, they, have, they have openly announced that from now on, they are heading the Star Wars universe which, in general. Which is great, because they clearly know what they're doing. There's a lot of love behind it. And it doesn't feel like a cash grab. As, no. much, as much as I liked like The Force Awakens and the sequel trilogy, it's good, but it doesn't, necess- it doesn't feel necessary. But this stuff, like The Mandalorian, like the stuff I hear about the upcoming Obi-Wan Kenobi show, this all feels... Mm-hmm. And I am really like excited to see what you know this whole you know group has to offer. And also, one other note that we can get into without spoilers is it is a wide known fact that that Lucas pulled for the original trilogy. He pulled a lot from like cowboy and um, yeah westerns old serials sa- uh, the jedi yeah the jedi itself are based off of like the bushido code and samurai which is why darth vader has a specific armor and iconography same with the and mandalorian, mandalorian like the mandalorian tv show definitely returns to that feel especially an episode directed by none other than dice bryce dallas bryce howard. dallas howard yeah i mean it that's that episode is straight up just the plot of Seven Samurai, but in Star Wars, and it's amazing. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. But yeah, uh, let's go ahead and talk about it. You know, we spent the first ten minutes just kind of gushing on Star Wars in general. Uh, this is your official spoiler alert. If you have not seen all eight episodes of Mand- the Mandalorian, what are you doing? The show is amazing. Um, use your free trial if you have to. Borrow somebody's Disney Plus password. Do what you got to do. We're not here to judge you. Go watch. Um, I did hear though that um, I forgot which service it is, but if you have one particular phone service, you get it for free. Verizon. Verizon gets a year for free. Um, I, I know that because Elizabeth has Verizon, and that's how she got Disney Plus for a year for free. Um, All right. Cool. But yeah. So go watch it. If you have Horizon, you have literally no excuse. You're getting it a year for free. So go watch it. Then come back here on your commute, on your workout, whatever you want to do. If you want to listen to us, you know, gush about this amazing show, definitely, you know, we appreciate it. (laughs) But that is your spoiler warning. Now we're going to dive into full-on spoiler territory. Okay. So... Are the spoiler people gone? The spoiler pe- free people gone? Good. Okay. Holy shit, man! What? Mm-hmm. What? Mm-hmm. Like, oh my lord! Okay, so <laughs> let's start off with just kind of the characterization of Din Djarin, the Mandalorian. 
Pedro Pascal, man. This dude is amazing. This role itself just requires a lot of acting talent. Because, again, you can't just rely on well-written dialogue, which, let's be honest, Star Wars isn't famous for. So, like, this is definitely a more action-based role. Um, And, you know what? He really pulls it off. You don't you only see his face one time, but I think that definitely helps kind of sell the impact of the moment, and it's just wow. Well, not only that, but that scene that scene alone not only impacts like the whole thing about him in the face, it also impacts him and his ongoing hatred towards droids, yeah. Yeah. And I love how that's, like, again, they connect it to, like, the prequel trilogy because, you know, this is during the era of the Clone Wars. So battle droids were in, you know, huge usage. So, like, it, it uh, <laughs> like seeing that, like, that big flashback that we saw all throughout the series uh, was, like, you know, his village being wiped out by super battle droids was kind of amazing. Because, you, you know, you hear about the Clone Wars all the time and, you know, we, we've seen, like, obviously the episodes of the show... And, you know, we've heard in passing in the original trilogy and stuff like that. But this, it really shows us the kind of the scale of the Clone Wars and how much of an impact it had all throughout the galaxy. So I think that was really awesome that, like, they tied it in. Because, like, the Clone Wars is probably one of the most impactful conflicts in Star Wars history. So, like, I'm glad that, like, they tied that into, like, Din's history as a character. Awesome. They... They brought in an IG-88 model droid. Yep, IG-11, played IG-11, by Taika Waititi, sorry. which is pretty awesome. No, it's it's fine. IG-88 is the most recognizable IG unit. Easy mistake. Yeah, but... Yeah, IG-11 is pretty awesome. I loved him, and I loved Ta- his character arc. Taika Waititi, voicing him. Yep. Which, yep. oh my god, that that man, it's just... That man is kind of <laughs> like a triple threat type guy. His, co- his, co- his comedic timing is just amazing. Well, not only that, but he's also an awesome director. Yeah, right? Like, he directed I mean, the about- finale, IG, IG's biggest episode. He directed yep. it. And I love all the Terminator homages all throughout that episode, too. Like, right down to, like, IG's final moments being very similar to, like, the the lava thumbs up in T2. All we needed was the thumbs up. Right? Oh, man. it was That was so good. Um, And, I mean, just the cast of characters we have, it's not Mm -hmm. massive. But the the characters that we do get are really amazing. So... You know, let's kind of just go through some of the smaller characters. Like, I loved Amy Sedaris' engineer. Mm-hmm. Um, that was on ta- that was on Tatooine. She was a lot of fun. And I love how she was just like, she seemed like the greedy character. And she just seemed like the typical greedy, like, mechanic type character. But then a character that we have yet to like actually officially confirm. Yeah. So yet. yeah. So let's go. Let's go ahead and talk about him because he's super important. He's in the thumbnail. Uh, you know, he's the you know one of the big driving forces that got everybody just all about this show. He is a meme machine, and he's green. He's a little green meme machine, and he is just adorable. The cutest thing in the entire galaxy. Baby Yoda. Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness. Baby Yoda. AKA the kid. Yep, the child. Um and you know, one of the one of the things that I will say, I, I got really annoyed by some people being like, You shouldn't call him Baby Yoda. Like, that's not his actual name. He's not Yoda. I'm like, yeah, dude, I know he's not Yoda, but we do not know what Yoda species is called, and he is a baby, therefore we're going to call him Baby Yoda. Yeah, indeed, and we can talk more about him when we actually talk about him as a character, but just going back to Amy Sedaris' character, seeing her interact with Baby Yoda and being, like, very protective, like... 
Yeah, because like, how can you? How can you not? Like, how does that? How does that little face not just change your mind about everything? Like, come on, man, you, you can't hurt that little face. Like, it's so cute. It's got a little wrinkled head. It's just so adorable. Mm-hmm. But yeah, man. Um, like all throughout, we meet a lot of really interesting characters throughout the galaxy. So of course, uh, we talked about Amy Sedaris's character, the mechanic. Uh, we got to meet some of Din's old crew, uh, <laughs> which was really interesting. Uh, you yeah, know, uh, like the crew that he used to run with, and like kind of like their new people, like Bill Burr's character, who that ran... whole that whole group is just familiar actors galore. Yep, and it was like a rough, it was like kind of like a Star Wars Guardians of the Galaxy type thing with how their group mm-hmm. was kind of structured, and I, I really dug it. Um, and like the second Bill Burr dropped Yoda, I was, baby Yoda, I was like, oh, he's, he's going to die. He's dying now. I hate you. Yeah, Bill Burr, I've never really completely been always a fan of his stand-up comedy. Yeah, he's kind of hit or miss for me, too. I mean, but when he's funny, he is really funny. Yeah, and his his character on on Mandalorian was awesome. It was damn near perfect. Like, he was kind of, he kind of reminded me of Yondu. Like, I, got, he, I don't know about you, I got that vibe. Oh, a, a little. But he's, he's like what I imagine a young Yondu would have been. Yeah, definitely. Like, um, but, but yeah, it's just like. It's just like he was a storm shooter. Yep. Like, he, yeah, yeah. He I, was like, I, I was, an, I was an imperial uh, sharpshooter. He goes, that's not really saying much. I wasn't a stormtrooper, asshole. <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. Where they actually addressed the whole fact that stormtroopers can't. Hear. I mean, they address it a couple times. You remember when, like, in in the last episode, that mm-hmm. like the two stormtroopers are just fucking around and they completely miss their target. Which is just a tin can. Yep. And they don't even hit it once. Two people. Oh, man. <laughs> that was hilarious. Uh, yeah. Um, so, talking about other characters, like, the um, met all in, throughout the journey. In that same crew, though, you also had Clancy Brown. Yeah! That was pretty awesome. And also, you had, uh, what was her name? Um, what was it wasn't Yara. I, 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 no, it, it it was it was it was it was like, no, it was, uh, it start, but it did start with a Y. But the Twi'lek chick, I know who you're talking about. The yeah, Twi'lek but chick. um, she was on Game of Thrones. Yeah, um, it wasn't uh, Yara, uh, Asha, Theon's sister, think... right? No, Yara no, 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 is no, no, no. Yara. The, the Wildling chick. It was the Wildling chick. The Wildling yeah. chick, right? Wasn't it the Wildling chick? Yeah, it was Asha. It's the like, Wildling chick Asha. that protected Bran. Yeah, yeah, her so, name yeah, is Asha. Asha. Yeah, yeah, Asha. That was but, Asha. See, because see, they, they changed it in Game of Thrones, like the TV show, because like it was uh, like fans were getting confused because um, Asha is spelled with an A, and um, Theon's sister in the books, her name is Osha. So it got confusing for TV people, I guess. So yeah. they, that's why her name was changed to Yara. But yeah, Asha was the Twi'lek chick who you know, had a, um, like, off-again, on-again ro- uh, romance with uh, Mando, which is pretty interesting. And is his, like, crazy ex. Yep. Who... And I, I, lo- I love when they open the door and they see Baby Yoda, and he goes, and then Bill Burr's like, wait, did you two make that? <laughs> yeah. And, and I love Baby Yoda, sh- the look on his face, he's like, oh, hey, Dad, who are your friends? Hey, how's it going? Yeah, and I don't know who he is, but I think I heard that the guy that played Asha's brother is somebody. Yep. Also, fun fact for you guys. Um, if you remember the uh, Republic uh, security guard that was uh, yep. th- that got killed in, um, in the prison break in that episode, that's actually Matt Lesher, a.k.a. the voice of Anakin Skywalker, from Star Wars and Clone Wars. Yeah, if you weren't gonna mention it, I was. I told you, I fucking love the Clone Wars. I was like, that's definitely something that I picked up on right off that. But, 
But yeah, so that whole crew was just awesome. Um, really fun. That episode, you also got um, I'm blanking on his name, but the dude's been everywhere. I know him most from Sons of Anarchy. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the dude who hired Mando. Yeah, he yeah he's the he's the guy who was in charge of the old crew. Yeah, I, I know exactly who you're talking about, but I can't place the guy's name either. Uh, if you guys want to tell us in uh, the feedback, definitely feel free to let us know, or you also know, an email or whatever. Also featured in that in that episode. Oh, I got his name if you want it. Oh yeah, go ahead. Uh, his name is Mark Boone Jr. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't remember his name. But yeah, that was. And that was also, cool. also in that episode, is a is a droid zero, yep. voiced by Richard Ayade. Yeah, what, that was really cool. I mean, they pulled a lot of great character actors like all throughout you know this first season. Yeah. Uh, Also in that episode, if if you remember, um, there was the there was the whole uh, team of like, oh yeah red... we, yeah which we, yeah which was the directors like uh, I know Deborah Chow was the female um, I know Ray Fukuji Ray Fukujima I want to say his name is. Um, was in there, and I know, was it Favreau? Favreau was there, too. Yeah. Filoni. No, Filoni. It was Filoni, not Favreau. Okay, cool. Yeah. Fa- Favreau's actually in it, but he's a different character. Yep. Another awesome one, like, line character. Yeah, I, I, love, I love whenever they can incorporate, like, the showrunner as, like, an extra. I think it's really fun. Yeah, and he was an awesome character, too. He was like the heavy hitter Mandalorian. Yeah, yeah. He was, he, he was the one that they got into a fight with. That got his own, like, Mandalorian minigun. He was, yo, that was so awesome. And, you know, it, it's, kind of, it's a fun homage, I think. I think that was a Predator reference. Because, you know, Favreau was in the original Predator. And the whole thing with Predator was about mini, <coughs> is the minigun. At least hmm. that, that was what I thought. I thought that was a little part of the reference. But maybe maybe that's just me reaching. Um, but uh, yeah. So going over like back over like kind of the main people that we you know m- meet throughout the galaxy. Uh, one of my personal favorites, and uh, this goes back to uh, probably my favorite episode of the season, is um, uh, we meet Gina Carano's character, Cara Dune. Mm-hmm. who is a former rebellion shock trooper from Alderaan and like I've always been a huge fan of Gina Carano I was one of those people I mean don't get me wrong I love Gal and she's amazing and does a great job as Wonder Woman but I was like a huge um, like supporter of the like make Gina Carano <laughs> Wonder Woman movement me too I was always um I was always one of the people that was pushing for her as an actress because I actually like her as an actress and I think that she was actually underutilized in Deadpool. I definitely think so too. Um, like she, she, she can act really well, and I mean, like she proved that she she's got like good chops as an actress as Cara mm-hmm. Dune. She has a lot. She had a lot of depth. Mm-hmm. Got to really see kind of the effects of war on a trooper and kind of like how strong, like, the pull of revenge can be, especially given, like, what the Empire did to her people. Yes. And, and talking about her makes me think about one of my, like, favorite scenes in the whole show. And that's where Mando goes to confront her for the first time. He thinks that she's trying to capture him. She thinks that he's trying to capture her. They have this big epic fight, which ends yeah, on, them, and, on the and, ground. And they end up on a draw, and they end up in a draw. Uh, that was in a awesome. draw with their blasters pointed at each other, and then you just hear a sip, and the yeah, camera pans and, up, and, and it's just Baby Yoda drinking his soup, like, "Hey guys, 
<laughs> yep. That's one of my favorite memes. Just the look, just Baby Yoda with the suit. <laughs> yeah, because they definitely like incorporate that into the like sipping tea type. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I I love that. It was it was pretty hilarious. Um, she, and also like uh, we get we get this. Um, she's also kind of the source of uh, seeing Baby Yoda tap into the dark side a little bit because, uh, you know, mm-hmm. when uh, they're having that arm wrestling match, and like Mando's <laughs> Mando's losing, and Baby Yoda thinks he's getting hurt, like he's legit <laughs> force chokes Kara, and like Mando starts freaking out, like no 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 no, she's our friend. She's our friend. Stop it. No, 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 no. Down. And he stops. To be fair, yeah. he stops. He does stop. Which, which, by the way, you talk about Yoda using the Force and all that. I love that scene in the finale where they're, like, pinned down by the big bad and all that. And Carl Weathers is just like... Why don't you tell the little guy to use his... Do the magic use, hand... Th- come on, hey, hey baby. Use, use, do the magic hand thingy, please. And do then the Baby Yoda thingy. just waves at him. He's just like, hey. Hi. He's just like, no. Do the magic hand thingy. <laughs> uh, but, like, when he does it, man, like, yo, this kid has crazy force potential. Like... He held back an entire flame and pushed mm-hmm. it back. Mm-hmm. I mean, he went from struggling to levitate like, you know, a mud rhino thingy to like, again, holding back like, and like force pushing an entire like fire's worth of like just arms. It was just nuts. Yeah, like he, that little dude took out a flame trooper all by himself when the adults were worried about it. Yeah, it was nuts, man. Like, this little guy's really grown, and it's amazing. And yeah. I just, I love, like, it, it kind of reminds me of, like, this, though, it, this might sound like a weird comparison, but once, like, once the Baby Yoda plotline started, the first thing I thought of was, like, oh, it's like Ice Age! <laughs> It's like where you know where like you know the, the gruff, seemingly like disgruntled people take care of this adorable little baby. They soften up and they like they learn that like you know they learn different things about themselves and you know people they meet all throughout their journey. And I'm like, oh yeah, this is cool. I like this. Yeah, and the smart the smart A Carl Weathers is definitely kind of like their version of Sid the Sloth. Yep. I I really hope that like we get to see more of this kind of like found family. And I mean found family has always been a huge theme of Star Wars to begin with. I mean, mm-hmm. you, you know, you look you look at Anakin who started off as just a slave boy and then you know he found family in the Jedi Order and eventually Padme and then and, you know and also not to mention the whole fact that they actually put a twist on that which is Oh yeah, a member of your found family is actually your blood family. Yep. Yeah, your twin Luke sister. Yeah, who you accidentally made out with, but we're not going to mention that anymore. <laughs> Nobody's. A, we're just going to all collectively forget that happened and yep. never address it. The only one who mentions it is Han, because <laughs> Han's like, "Wait a minute, you kissed him." <laughs> Like, no, I don't know what you're talking about. No, I don't know what you're talking about. That's my brother. I, don't, I have no idea what you are talking about at all. But anyway, um, that, speaking of found families, um, again, this one of the biggest things that I love is whenever Star Wars can really, like, expand on lore and, like, showcase mm-hmm. it. And um, Mandalorian culture was on, you know, full display here. Like the whole found link system, earning pieces of your armor, mm-hmm. earning your earning a clan seal. A, a super bad a awesome smaller character who's only credited as the armorer. Yep, the Mandalorian Smith character, who is played amazing. By, played by, believe it or not, um an actress named Emily Swallows. 
who also oh, cool. is known in the geek sphere for playing oh, yeah? the darkness, aka God's sister in Supernatural. Holy shit! That was her. Damn. She is so cool. Yes. You know. Speaking uh, of characters, uh, I want to see return. Yep. And I mean, we'll talk about this later, but there is one particular Mandalorian that I would love to see um, that mm-hmm. um, that is played by a huge geek um, geek actress um, who um, you know loves that character in particular and loves that part and has constantly been like, "If you guys ever want me to play her again, I will play her again." And um, also, maybe another Mandalorian that may have been hinted at in but, a uh, scene. But the, 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 uh, I'll go ahead and say it. The Mandalorian I am talking about is Bo-Katan, a.k.a. the Mandalore. Um, the, well, she was the current Mandalore because she earned the Darksaber after, uh, like, or well, during the time of the Rebellion. And Bo-Katan was voiced by, in the Clone Wars, uh, one of my favorite geek actresses, Katie Sackhoff. And Katie Sackhoff loves that character. So I think she would definitely come back and focus on... Because we need to know what happened to her in the first place because, you know, we know the fate of the Darksaber and where it currently is. So something had to have happened to her. By the way, you know that Mandalorian is set between episodes. Oh, um, it's, no, it's set. It's set five years after Return of the Jedi. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I said but, that. But but yeah. Um, some people are also considering that. Uh, I'm just talking about going in and saying what I was saying. Uh huh. Uh. Boba Fett. Oh yeah, the, I mean everybody thought that uh, Gu- um, Gus Fring's character, um, Moff Gideon, was Boba Fett because uh, in that scene where like they collected M- um, Ming Na's body, um, you-, you see the spurs and you hear the sound, and it's that's yeah. always been associated with Boba Fett. So of Which course we you know, never well, really got an answer to that, so it still yeah, could be and- him. <laughs> And I mean, they could always do the Legends thing of where he made it out the Sarlacc pit. So, who knows? Well, I mean, they were also on that planet. Yeah. They were on Tatooine. So, it is, yeah. it is possible. Uh, and, but yeah, like... Which, by the um, way, which, just by the quick... way, I, I was just about to say, like, that that's if if there was one thing that pissed me off is the fact that like they just kind of unceremoniously kill off Ming Na and I'm like don't tell me he's actually dead especially not by that little shit. Yep. Which like, by the way, just, you don't just get Ming Na and kill her off. Which by the way, that little shit is actually kind of someone. He's an up and coming that- actor. But his daddy he like, is more he, famous. He looked like Nat Wolf. I thought that was Nat Wolf, but it, I, I remember looking no, it up and um, it was not him. He, or Alex Wolf. He's the, one of the, bro- he's one the, of the son. Names. He's the son of another like very popular character actor who's been in a lot of things. But what for the geeks out there, what he'd probably most be known for is Cassie's stepfather on in the Marvel movies. Oh, from Ant Man. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, his his IRL son is the little shit that killed killed Ming Na. Uh, interesting. Yes. All right. So um, but, but so speaking of other characters, let's go ahead and talk about one of my other favorite characters, um, Quill the <laughs> Quill the Ugnot. Oh my God, that guy is awesome. I loved him. R.I.P. Man. R.I.P. Indeed. Indeed. And talk talk about an actor who has, like, come out of the crazy and been awesome. Right? McNulty. Yeah. I mean, the first thing they did after, after he was, like, out of the crazy was he did that awesome movie, Warrior. 
Yep. That awesome MMA movie. It's it's so funny because like it lo- the puppet kind of looked like him. So I was like, is that that's not actually Nick Nolte? And then you told me and I was like, oh my god, that's actually Nick Nolte? Whoa. Yeah, and he he was just so awesome because he was like a guy where it's just like I've lived my life and now I just want to you know, do the yeah, right. I just I, I just want to be in peace and I want I want to help people. And I also like that he was like very interested in the lore and like you know he like helped give us some information about Mandalorian culture, you know and, stuff like that. Like and the, also the whole story of the Mythostore and everything. And also his stuff about like the war and how he was a slave in the Republic. Yeah, his his back and forth with Kara was really interesting because obviously you know they were both on opposite sides of the war. Kara being a rebel and you know, um, you know Quill being forced into indentured servitude on the Empire side, and like you know him kind of explaining. He goes, "No, you know I did my time. I wasn't proud. I wasn't." you know, proud of the side I served on, but but I did it for my people and I'm proud of my work. You know, I earned my service. And I've and I've lived two lifetimes and paid my so debt. I, so I've I've earned my redemption. I've earned my rest. I don't need you to judge me. You know, and I, I really respect that. And you know, at the end of the day, he was never out for anything. He just wanted to help his friend, help the child and, you know, keep another look, creature from being forced into slavery and also look over his pets yep. his little dino pet things yeah the blurgs the blurgs the, the blurgs which that was awesome but also gut riching when the when that like pterodactyl thing started attacking he's like get your yeah, hands off I was like her. no yeah, yo, the pterosaur was pretty intense. That whole thing was intense, man. Like, they wiped out, like, that one guild member, and then, you know, uh, Carl Weathers got hurt, and then that's when Baby Yoda used his horse heel. Which, which is, that also that goes awesome. to, that also goes to Quill, because everyone was like, get the baby away, and Quill's like, no, wait. He's powerful. Like, mm-hmm. Maybe he can help. And he just, he waddled over. I love that he waddles, man. Mm-hmm. This is so mm-hmm. cute. He waddled over. He's like, and I just... got you. And then I, I love Carl Weathers. He's like, he's freaking out. He's paranoid. He goes, oh no, he's trying to eat me. <laughs> yeah, and it's just like, he puts his little tiny hand on Carl Weathers' leg. Yep. And then you hear like the force theme. I I really love how they like use old music cues and it's not just like a nostalgia trip. I mean obviously like they, they use it on purpose, but how they use music in this show is really well done. Mm-hmm. Cause one, I mean because there's so little dialogue, music has to be a, such a strong driving force all the time. Yeah, through. one one character that I don't know if you want to get into just yet, who they use it a lot with is uh Gideon. Oh yeah, they use a lot of the imperial themes with him. Like it's a, it's a big thing, um, and I, I really like I love that actor. Uh, he's always been one of my favorites, Giancarlo Esposito. Um, yep, Gus Spring himself, the Mirror from Once Upon a Time. Whatever you want to, you know. Which know, talk know about him, like but... a varied career, <laughs> right? But man, he has one hell of a presence. Yeah. When he shows up in that baller ass tie fighter, like, bro. And then comes out in like this, like, kind of looked like an upgraded Shadow Trooper type armor. Yeah. With the cape. And then, and then, on top of all that shit, we find out that this motherfucker. Has the motherfucking dark saber? What? Uh-huh. What? Oh, I have so many questions. And then, and then also one other side-handed thing is uh, we hear about his character offhandedly from the two, from the two like sand trooper dudes. Yeah. When they're just like shooting the, 
shit waiting for everything. Yeah, and- yeah. So it's like, can I, can I, can I see the, can I see the creature? It is no. Last, last, last person, last person who saw the creature without Moffy getting permission. He just wiped out an entire battalion. I'm not trying to fuck with all that, man. I don't want to live. Apparently, yeah, and apparently while we were going with them, he killed several stormtroopers just to prove a point. And then yep. he killed a general for interrupting him. Yep. <laughs> it's like, we're going to be here a while. He just killed a general by for interrupting him, so we can expect him try- to be here a while. I'm, yeah, he was like, I'm not going to call him just to ask if you can see the creature. Don't worry about it. This is like we're gonna be here a while. <laughs> no, nah, man. Oh, he he's so cool. I'm glad he didn't die because he has a he has a like a lot of presence. And yeah. obviously he's got like a connection to Mando in his past because not because he knows Mando's real name, Din Djarin, and like that means he has access. He's had access to Mandalore's records, like the Founding Registry, and and. And by the way, we didn't really mention it before, but him saying Din Djarin is the first time that we ever heard the Mandalorian's real name. Yep. And I think, you know, something really cool that, you know, we can definitely talk about now. Um, we don't we still don't really know what the Empire's plan <coughs> for Baby Yoda is. So I'm I'm pretty sure Quill confirmed, because apparently he worked in gene farms like while working with the Empire. That baby Yoda is a nat- like is a natural born creature, so he is a natural born Yoda species. So I think, um, you know, the obvious thing is, of course, um, we saw the Imperial scientist that like was forced to like work on baby Yoda. He had a Kaminoan um, emblem on his jacket, so he's obviously a cloner. So I-, I think the big plan was to try and clone baby Yoda and like have an army of Yoda species <laughs> warriors, which, you know, it's going to be super difficult to begin with because, you know, uh, cloning a force sensitive is damn near impossible um, because uh, manipulating metachlorians is like a super advanced science. Um, which might be different, though, if the whole race is connected to the force. Exactly, which, is- which would make it even more difficult. Like I think it would make it easier, though, because it's just like if they naturally have the connection with the Force. Yeah, but the thing is, the connection to the Force is what makes cloning so much harder. That's why you can't really clone Force sensitives. But anyway, we never really know. Like the Force itself, like interrupts cloning technology. Like we don't ever see, we don't ever see like a Sith Lord, so we don't even know if they're like proper. Empire or just like a remnant because like they said uh, Maz Gideon was infamously supposed to be yeah he was just a database worker but and he was supposed to be dead Mm -hmm. like they said it so yeah it's pretty much kind of like the equivalent of like leftover Nazi sympathizers after World War II Mm-hmm. Like it's kind of, it's kind of that same area. So I think really what season two is going to be, and I think that this, this is really awesome considering where it's set. I think it's going to be Mando trying to like look into the history of the Jedi, and <clears throat> obviously try to find the Jedi or at least you know the Yoda species. So mm-hmm. we can either get info on Yoda species, which we do not have at all, because Yoda species famously. Um, his home planet isn't even ar- um, isn't even recorded in the Jedi archives. Um, their their people just kind of show up to the Jedi Order when they're ready. And actually, Baby Yoda is the only known member of the Yoda species who has not actually who didn't actually become a Jedi like off bat. So that's pretty interesting. Um, and I think this will be a cool thing because obviously we don't know much about like Luke's fledgling order post Return of the Jedi. So we could learn, you know, little mm-hmm. inklings of what Luke's been up to and stuff like that. Obviously, before the whole big Kylo catastrophe. Um, so, I think it could be and, really cool. I mean, Marvel like, world building wise, Marvel's proven that they have the technology to bring in older actors and de-age them. Yeah, and I mean, we're, we're gonna um, we're gonna get um, 
we're even going to get like in the Obi Wan Kenobi series, like you and McGregor is going to have like ha- you. They're going to use like aging technology to make you and McGregor look like Alec Guinness, and we're going to get a younger Luke Skywalker cast in there as well. So it's going to be pretty awesome. Rumor is also that Hayden Christensen is going to show up in that show as well, um, in flashbacks of Anakin. Interesting. So, like, there's a lot of cool stuff coming down the pipeline. For Star also, Wars. we could get to see, because um, I'm not mistaken, didn't Obi-Wan at one point have a wife? Uh, he did not. Um, Obi-Wan had a longtime girlfriend who was the Duchess of Mandalore, but she was murdered by Darth Maul. Oh. Yep. But you, you never murdered. know. You never know. The Star Wars universe is like the Winona Earp universe. Everyone has a secret wife sometimes. Yeah, but I don't think I don't think Obi Wan got over ever got over Duchess of Teen. When, yeah. when 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 your when your wife was impaled by your mortal enemy, it's kind of it's, it's kind of a tough one. You know, just kind of move on from that. But I mean, anyway. he almost left the Jeff. He almost left the Jedi Order twice for her. Like, like. You know, back that's... back to Mandalorian though. Um, yep. There are so I of... I really yeah uh, I was just gonna say I I really loved uh, just Din's character development overall. You know, at mm-hmm. first when we first see him, he's just like your standard cold, ruthless, badass bounty hunter. But you know, when the child comes around, and you know, after the child saves his life, you know, he's like <coughs> starts to bond with the kid. Mm-hmm. And like he, you know, really cares about it and wants to protect it, and you know he wants to do what's best for it. And at first, he's like, you know, life with me is going to be dangerous. But then he realizes that like that the Empire is going to keep sending hunters after him, so he is the best chance of this kid surviving in the first place. And then by yeah. the end, um, by the end, his surrogate mother, the Mandalorian, like armor smith, is like, uh, you know. He's part of your clan. He's part of your clan now, and by custom, since you found him, until you can either reunite him with his own kind or um, until he comes of age, uh, you know he's your son, and mm-hmm. you know he'll be part of your clan, and he's your responsibility. Yeah, that's... which I really hope. I really hope he gets a Mandalorian helmet since he's officially a foundling. <laughs> That, like, that would be. Oh, come on. That would be, that'd be so cool. You got a little green. Yeah, that would be kind of cute. But also, just about the Mandalorian, it's just like his moments of like, I'm this big, giant badass. And then Baby Yoda does something. And he's like, oh, hell. I, I, just, I just love the smaller moments. Like, the, you know, yeah. when, he twists off, when he twists off the knob to his, like, you know, his hyper mm-hmm. shift. And he gives it to him because he knows he wants to play with it. I'm just like, oh man, oh. And then, and then that's an actual thing about this show that I like is jokes will pay off for yeah. serious moments. Like that yep. knob joke paid off by the fact that he noticed that Baby Yoda wasn't yearning for the little ball, and so he looks over and he's playing with something else, and it turns to be. A necklace that he has on. Yep, it, it's it's the it's the Mandalorian insignia that yep. he uses. It's kind of his like his um. Kind, it's it's sort of like an ID badge. You know, you show it to another Mandalorian enclave, and you, they know you're an actual Mandalorian and not mm-hmm. just someone wearing armor. And he's and like, he, you know what? You hold on to that. And I'm just like, oh. And he's like, I thought I lost that. Now. <laughs> I thought I lost. Said, that. I never you hold on to that. Yeah. And, I never thought I'd see that again. Yeah, it was so cute. And just another, like, funny joke that had a serious payoff was IG with the self-destruction thing. Yeah, man. Oh, my God. Like, again, we talked about it earlier. All throughout episode yeah. one, he was like, I will self-destruct now. He's like, no, no, no. Yep. But it, it and like, we, talked, we talked about it earlier, but it was like, it ended up turning into, like, this big T2-style thing. Like, you know, Mando finally, you know, got over his droid prejudice and made a friend with IG. And, like, he's like, no, you don't have to do this. You don't have to do this. He goes, we have no other choice. You know I this. know you were we sad, m- but there's no other choice. And he's like, 
<clears throat> I'm not sad. I'm not sad. I I've listened to your voice. I I know I know the difference. I am a nurse. Story. It's okay. To, it's okay I to be sad. I, uh, the, and, and he goes. No, my my objective is to protect the child. This is our best way of protecting the child. You understand, don't you? And it's just like, yeah, fine, go ahead. And it's it was all it was almost like that again. The T two like in the lava mm-hmm. thumbs up moment when he like blew up and just took out everybody with him. That was so awesome. Such a good payoff for an amazing character. Yeah. But like like but, IG eleven I think goes up there with C three PO, K two SO, and R G D two as like best droids. Which by the way, speaking of like R two and all that, that like R two spin. Oh yeah, oh yeah, the oh yeah, the mod the modded R two with the long like the long ass arms and legs. Yeah, that the was gondola, weird. The lava gondola driver droid. Yeah, <laughs> that was so weird. And then in the end, he gets killed by Gina Carano. And yep. you're like. Oh man, so good. Hopefully we'll get to actually see like I hope that like Gina Carano and like Carl Weathers like kind of form like a bounty hunter crew with him. I think that'd be a dope. Yeah. Or at least, you know, they'll probably at least be re- <laughs> reoccurring characters. Hopefully, yes. Especially since um, you know, Din got reinstated in the guild, you know, at least, you know, Grief Grief promised him, him that he'd, you know, be back in the guild when he's ready. Yeah. And also, uh, just speaking of characters and all, they're they're a ton of small characters. Like one of the one of the characters in um, one of the characters that was in um, the Gunslinger was actually played by C. Bloom. Yep, and they're. We talked about Bill Burr, but there were a lot of stand-up... There were a lot of comedians in this show, surprisingly. Yeah, Brian Poussain was in episode one! Yep. And I love his that little... Was I love his little space cabbie character. Yep. <laughs> he was like just space Uber driver, just chilling. <laughs> yep, and I, I forgot who it is now, but... The blue guy from episode one. Yep. He's someone too. But yeah, since we've pretty much talked about everything, what are your kind of, uh, let's uh, go ahead and go into overall thoughts and any kind of predictions for season two or stuff we want to see. Um, I really, I really liked season one. It definitely, I will admit that, um, that is the whole baby Yoda thing is like the the second biggest what the fuck geek surprise I've seen right recently. the only thing that the only thing that for me topped it was the reveal in the Doctor Who premiere that just happened yep yep but the <coughs> But until that, it was it was Baby Yoda with that reveal because nobody yep. saw that coming at all. And I, I am definitely buying a plushie as soon as that comes out. Oh my god, man! So cute. Just take my money now, Star Wars. Take it all. Um. Me overall, man, I fucking love this show. I've always loved Mandalorians, Mandalorian culture, like Mandalorian armor, just the history, the lore, all that stuff. It's so interesting. This gives me everything I love about Star Wars and more. There's, I have mm-hmm. like zero complaints about this show whatsoever. And this was the show, along with High School Musical, the musical, the series, that made me be like, damn it, you know what? Disney Plus, you are worth it. You are worth it. Yeah. I I love this. Yes, indeed. And I don't know about you, but for me, this has been like the most Star Warsy feeling Star Wars property in a while. Yeah, not since the Clone Wars have I like been 
so excited to see a Star Wars related show weekly. And that's no offense to Rebels because Rebels is great too. But man, Clone Wars, it was just that next level shit. Speaking of which, we're getting, we're getting one more season of Clone Wars with a lot where they actually get to finish a lot of the <laughs> unfinished episodes that were turned into comics and books. So that's really exciting. I'm so hyped. In, indeed. So, that's but... going to be great. We're de- we'll definitely be covering that in the future. Do not think that this is the last Star Wars related episode that we will have because that is far from the truth. Because like I, I mean, said, we, we are got definitely... Clone Wars coming up. We got Obi-Wan Kenobi coming up. We got a Cassian Andor show coming up, which means we'll get to see K- uh, K2SO again, which, you know, Alan Tudyk as a droid, always great. Indeed. But you also t- you also talk about, like, for the future. You talk about for the future. Um, do you think of any, like, actors that you want to see? Like I said, Katie Sackhoff is Bo-Katan. I would love to see her, like, show up. You know, I, I would love to know what happened to her. Because, you know, the Darksaber is with Moff Gideon now. Uh, I would love to see an older version of Sabine Wren... Ahsoka Tano, Captain Rex, any of the Clone Wars characters? Like, just give me some of the Clone Wars characters. <clears throat> Are there any, like, non-returning characters, uh, uh, actors that you'd like to see? Um, I mean, I'd, I'd love to, I'd love to just see more Mandalorians in general, maybe, like, played by some, like, fighters or, mm-hmm. like, any big, like, athletes or anybody that's, like, a huge Star Wars fan. I'd love to see just more expansion on, like, Mandalorians and, you know, I'm... incorporating some old EU, Old Republic stuff. I would love to see that because, like, I... the ancient stuff is really interesting. I know, um, I, I know, um, this is probably just my bias, I realize, but I would love to see any of the, like, living cast beyond Tudic for Firefly come in for characters. Oh yeah, dude. Gina Torres would be making awesome like bounty hunter. Yeah. And and uh God, I'm blanking on her name now, River. Summer Glau. Yep, Summer Glau. Summer Glau would be great. Uh um I would also love to see like uh of course Nathan Fillion's already been in Star Wars. Uh, or mm-hmm. at least like the sequel, the sequel trilogy. So like maybe we'll see him as an alien again. But That'd be pretty cool. Adam Baldwin, he'd definitely be like a perfect older bounty hunter type character. Yep, I'd love to see who like like the, the Mando who raised Din. That'd be really interesting. I I want to see him if he's still around. Yeah, uh, and you know who could be a good person for that? Oh yeah. Um, if he could take a break from his other show that he's doing right now, uh, uh, Ron Perlman, maybe. Oh, hell yeah, dude. That would be awesome. And speaking about Ron Perlman, I know he's doing Star Trek right now, but uh, Doug Jones would be cool in this show. Oh, yeah, he, yeah he, he's really good. I would think that'd be pretty awesome. Also, one other person that I would like to see it. That could be like a smarmy pilot type. I know no one else will get this, but kind of like my character in our RPG game, Jay. Yep, yep, I could see that. Um, I would like to see, uh, for someone like that, I know he's expressed interest in another like Star Wars thing, but uh, Captain America himself. Oh man, Chris Evans as a smarmy, like, force-sensitive pilot? Yo, that would be so dope. Yeah. I think it would be, I, and I think I think that's definitely something that's going to happen in season two. Like, as you know, Din like researches the Jedi and stuff, he'll probably come across other Force sensitives and all that. So that'll be interesting. Mm-hmm. Also, I know they will never do this because even the new reboot series doesn't cover this. But I would love it if they at least mentioned the Gray. I mean. The, I mean, the, the, the Clone Wars and uh, Rebels have d- touched on, like, the Grey Jedi stuff. And, I mean, Qui-Gon Jinn was confirmed to be a Grey Jedi. So, well, you never know. It could be a thing. 
Because definitely Baby Yoda it seems like he, he, when he grows up, he's... <coughs> he, yeah. He, I mean, I'll, he, obviously the Yoda species has a natural affinity towards the light side, and he's going to be mostly light side. But given how he's growing up and, you know, the environment he's in, I definitely think he's going to align more in the gray, uh, you know, side of the spectrum. Yeah. So I think that would be cool. It would be really cool if they end up going to Ilum and uh, getting him a little lightsaber uh, before Ilum gets turned into Starkiller Base. Yeah, and so I know I, that, that would be really interesting. I know that they're um, that they're not always um, they're not always highly looked upon, and it might be expensive to include them. But I would love it if they touched on the Ewoks in season two. Oh man, uh, I, I, I just want to see Warwick Davis. Like, he, Wicked is one of my favorite characters. I, I used to have an Ewok teddy bear um, as a kid. Loved e. I love the Ewoks. I even watched. I even watched the Ewok special. Like that's how much I love the Ewoks. I know it's terrible, but I still I still have a soft spot for it. Like I understand. Yes, I know the e- both Ewok specials suck, but they're still they're still good to me. They're still good to me. And just because the the droids specials suck doesn't mean that the droids are bad. Exactly. Although they're not as bad as people, you know, say. I mean, they're bad, but they're not. They're they're enjoyable in a so bad it's good kind of way. And I mean, I'm not sure where it is timeline wise, but I would love it if they had like an an at least a nod to the game to the current game. Oh, you talking about uh, Fallen Order? Fallen yeah. Order takes place. Uh, I believe it is. Um, it takes place before A New Hope, I believe. So it's a little too early. Well, at least like a nod. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, he uh, like spoilers for the end. Spoilers for the end of the game, I guess. But he's in the unknown region, so I mean, d- if they end up going into wild space, they could end up running into him. If or they really want to, you know, do all or that at least, stuff. Or at least like have a Dio in there. Because like the. Uh... The Dio like droid. The, um, oh, you mean uh, BD? Yeah. Dio, Dio is the little droid from um, Rise of Skywalker. Oh. My bad. Yeah. The, the, the droid from Fallen Order is BD. He's cool. BD. Um, yeah, but like the... Uh, they're going like a whole like Indi- uncharted Indiana Jones route with him. And I, th- I feel like they're going to keep him in wild space. So... They could, they could always run into him if they really want to tie it in. Because it seems like <laughs> they really want to expand into that type of, type of stuff. And it looks like the new canon is uh, doing a lot of focusing on ancient um, Star Wars. Because I, I have a feeling they're going to build up to the next trilogy being an Old Republic type thing. But that's just my you know big dream as a Star Wars nerd. But yeah. So those are just overall <laughs> thoughts and feels about The Mandalorian Season 1. And I only coughed a handful of times, so I feel like that's a success. So um, we have reached that special part of the night where we get to uh, tell you guys what's coming up on you know, our channels and you know, just in general with us in terms of like videos and all that stuff. Uh, it is plug time. So Brian, what do you have coming up uh, for the people to know about? Well- the shows are still, our regular scheduled shows are still kind of on break this week. Uh, so, for me, coming up, it's um, on Sunday, the actual, like, proper weekly start of Doctor Who. Yep. Part 2 of Spyfall, which... I'm not going to spoil it because it's so new. Part but... one was mind-blowing, man. It was just, wow. It, it was, was possibly... Not... It was possibly Chibnall's best episode. There was a twist <laughs> that none of us saw coming. And I say none of us because uh, we have a group chat where we, like, you know, live text TV and stuff. And we... me, me, our friend Mimi, and, of course, Brian, like, we, we all are <laughs> super into Doctor Who. So, like, that whole episode, we were just like, oh, my God, 
Yo, what? What is happening? Uh, Don't worry, we're gonna do a Doctor Who episode once the uh, <laughs> once the season wraps up. Apparently, if you keep your eye, if you keep your ear and rumor and, and stuff, there was a slight rumor involving the twist, but not completely. And so, I'm being vague. I'll tell you off air, but. Yeah, a lot of people from I'm seeing, like, from reactions and all that, nobody saw this coming. I'm surprised that they managed to keep this under wraps. Right? And, I mean, we were so focused on one thing that we were just, like, we were completely blindsided by, like, the signs. It's, we'll, we'll talk about it in the actual Doctor Who episode, but trust us, it's pretty huge. Um, yeah, but anyway, but beyond that, I believe the next thing coming from me is on Harley Friday. Quinn and Harley Quinn and High School Musical the musical the series. Yes, which Harley Quinn just continues to get better and better and That's, weirder um, and weirder. I, I fucking love this show, man. Like Indeed. and you want to talk about like a surprising amount of just stacked voice cast. The voice cast for Harley Quinn is phenomenal. And it's a lot of surprises when you, including really, someone that we've already mentioned who voices a character for the Star Wars universe. Yeah, Alan Tudyk. He voices Clayface, and he is amazing. And he also Man. voices Joker. Yep. So, can you imagine that? Clayface and, and, and I, Joker. And it, it's kind of funny because his Joker voice also sounds very similar to his Mr. Nobody on Doom Patrol. His, his Joker is kind of like a mix of Mr. Nobody and Hamill's Joker. Yeah, yeah de he definitely has that energy. Uh, definitely but, expect a Harley Quinn. But then, but then High School Musical, the musical of the series, the finale is this upcoming Friday. Yep. Thankfully, Wait. though, unlike a certain show that we both loved that was canceled too soon, this show was already renewed for a right. <clears throat> Yeah, unfortunately. We'll, we'll talk about Rise when we talk about High School Musical, the musical, the series soon. But the Trust finale me. is coming up, and honestly, even though this is like a different type of show, I, uh, I cannot tell you how that is going to end because I don't know how that's going to end. Same, and honestly, I love it. I, I love, Indeed. I love that Disney Plus has such a wide variety of content, and it's great. Um, Indeed. So for me. Uh, for me, in terms of stuff coming up, I actually have to still record my uh, review of the Mandalorian finale, uh, which I'll probably do after this, uh, because I was I was sick the week that the finale came out, and I was busy most of today's, and obviously I was recording the podcast, so I got to do that. Which, by the too. way, uh, just a quick side note for for those of you who might be new: when we talk about my stuff, it's on YouTube. But when we talk about Jay stuff, it's on Vlair. Yep, links to both are in the description, as always. Also, uh, and I'll, I'll talk about that in a second, but uh, yeah. So, I'm, I'll be recording my review of the Mandalorian finale officially and putting that on my Vlair. Um, I'm also going to be recording the um, uh, my review of the Steven Universe Future uh, mid-season finale, episodes 9 and 10. Uh, because, again, I was sick, so there's still stuff to catch up on. Um, and I think... I'm, I'm shooting for Sunday to be when my Witcher review to is going to come out. Uh, I've been kind of putting that off because, like, I, I didn't want to watch it while sick because I wanted to p be able to pay full attention to it while watching the whole thing. But I heard nothing but great things, so I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, so there's that um, coming up um, in terms of video stuff. I also uh, will be putting up a review of the first two episodes of Dare Me. The new uh, teen mystery drama on USA, which is amazing. It's like Euphoria and Big Little Lies and Pretty Little Liars just had a threesome and created an amazing show. Which I unfortunately missed it. It's a really good show. I, I, I cannot wait to hopefully <laughs> do an episode when the season wraps up. But it is great. I love it. And man, just 
I really need to know what this this big mystery is because like the build up for this show is just amazing. Um, so that in terms of videos, that's what's coming up, and of course, like uh, I got like the anime stuff, like My Hero Academia. I'm still doing reviews of and uh, different things like that. Um, the CW shows will be coming back in a couple of weeks, and same with the network shows as well. In terms of network shows that I'm covering, I'm reviewing The Good Place. The Good Doctor, This Is Us, and I'm going to be doing the uh, mid-season premiere for A Million Little Things. So I've got a bunch of, you know, TV-related content and on as, And as far as I go for when shows come back and all that, I am going to be doing the, a lot of the CW stuff. Uh, the super, Of course, the superhero shows. Uh, minus... Flash and now maybe Supergirl because it doesn't really do that well. Yeah, Same and also Doctor Who. Yep, yep. That that's what I'm thinking as well. Um, uh, but, but also I... uh, one that I am looking into, which hopefully I will at the very least cover the premiere of, is uh, Zoe's Infinite Playlist. I'm... I'm doing. I know I'm doing that one for sure. That's the, that. Uh, the special premiere is this Tuesday, and I'm looking forward to recover uh, doing that the premiere, um, and I'm going to be covering that weekly as well. Uh, yeah, that's on my list also. So, um, if you guys want to um, actually give us feedback, um, the best way to do that is uh, give us a five star rating on iTunes. It helps people find the podcast and. You know, helps us get more plays, and we really appreciate that. And if you want to give us feedback to tell us your thoughts on The Mandalorian or any of the other shows that we have covered on this handful of episodes we've done so far, uh, be sure to email us at channeltasterspodcast at gmail.com, and your emails will be read by, uh, you know, either of us. And, uh, you know, we'll definitely share them on the show as well. Um, If you want early access to the podcast, uh, you can donate as little as a dollar a month Link to the Patreon is in the description down below, and you'll get access to podcast audio before it even goes live on iTunes, Spotify, and all those other places. So if you really love our podcast and you want to help support us and help keep the lights on over here, the Patreon is the best way to do it. And I I would really appreciate it uh, if you donated. But again, you don't really have to. Just listening to the podcast and, you know, spreading the word um, helps us, you know, a great deal. And coming up for the podcast, let me just pull up ye old schedule real quick so you guys know uh, what's coming up. So we have, so I can give you guys, you know, a good idea. Next week, <coughs> we will be covering um, Carolyn Tuesday Part 2. We're switching it up and we're going anime. Carolyn Tuesday is uh, probably one of my favorite new anime of uh, that premiered in 2019. And we actually did an episode on the first part. Uh, in our original incarnation of Channel Chasers. So I was like, Brian, I think I want to switch things up a little bit, mix, uh, you know, mix things up and uh, do uh, cover some anime content. And besides, you've been wanting to get into more anime. And we loved Carolyn Tuesday. So, of course, I was like, let's do Carolyn Tuesday Part 2. That came out around Christmas time. So I figured, you know, this would be a good one. A L- little nice, lighthearted balance since we talked about something so, like, you know, gritty and violent this week. So that'll be fun. Hopefully you guys will enjoy that. Yeah. Uh, but uh, we hope you enjoyed this episode of the Channel Chasers uh, talking about The Mandalorian. And we'll hope to see you guys next week. Until next time, like I always say, once a comic geek, always a comic geek. And once a Star Wars fan, always a Star Wars fan. Till next time, I'll catch you guys later. I have spoken. Peace. See ya.